Previously, when the treatment of bifurcation disease has called for a stent, there have been limited treatment options available to clinicians. Bifurcation coronary lesions represent up to 30% of all PCI procedures and are considered more technically challenging, with a far lower treatment success rate compared with non-bifurcated lesions. Challenges faced by interventional cardiologists include the angle of the bifurcation and a wide variety of osteal shapes and lesion types. Additionally, the inability to completely scaffold and protect the osteal anatomy and the side branch from plaque redistribution and possible shifting of the carina remains a challenge. Conventional techniques used to treat bifurcation lesions, including provisional stenting and various two-stent approaches, often fail to ensure complete coverage of the side branch osteum, resulting in stent malaposition at the side branch. Struts floating in the osteum disturb blood flow and increase the risk of focal restenosis and stent thrombosis, limiting the success of stenting in bifurcations. To address this gap, Capella Medical has developed its sideguard stent technology, which provides a new, dynamic, effective and easy to use solution for the treatment of bifurcation disease. This next generation stent platform preserves the side branch of diseased coronary arteries by protecting the osteum with its unique trumpet-shaped design. Capella's sideguard technology is now used in many hospitals across Europe and South America and is starting to affect a change in PCI procedures. Here, several leading interventional cardiologists have offered to share their experiences. Antonio Colombo, director of the Cardiac Cath Lab and Interventional Cardiology at EMO GVM Centro Coare Columbus and Chief of Invasive Cardiology at San Rafael Hospital, has worked with Capella Medical since its inception to develop the sideguard. This hospital uh, is, a, is an historical hospital for the uh, purpose of angioplasty and coronary interventions. I am the director here and the founder of this uh, uh, institution. I helped uh, develop uh, these uh, procedures, uh, coronary interventions, uh, uh, at least uh, in Italy for the past uh, 20 years. Manchester Heart Centre is a centre with approximately 12 consultant cardiologists, of which five are interventional cardiologists. We perform approximately 1,600 to 1,700 um, PCI procedures a year. We are here in the, in the community hospital in Trier and we treat in this cardiology department more than 4,500 patients per year and we do more than 1,600 interventional procedures. I have been always uh, very innovative uh, uh, interventionist in the field of bifurcations. Uh, I try to come out with uh, solutions uh, for this difficult anatomy, uh, various techniques, uh, people uh, interested in developing uh, new stents uh, approached me and uh, they asked me if I wanted to help uh, in developing uh, a dedicated uh, stent uh, for bifurcations and uh, I gave my ideas, uh, engineers gave their ideas and uh, we came out uh, uh, with this new concept of a self-expanding uh, trumpet shape uh, uh, stent uh, for bifurcations. I first learned about Capella 18 months ago and this was when the company approached us to trial uh, their new stent platform and immediately I was very excited because this represented a brand new niche product within the market, something that hadn't been developed before. Since that introduction 18 months ago we've worked very closely um, with Capella and we provide feedback um, about their product and future product development uh, with the company. We are one of the largest UK users of Capella, um, having performed about 67 uh, cases so far. And uh, Dr. Fathor Dabardi um, is one of the UK leads um, for the new registry studies that will be performed using the Capella Sideguard system. The modifications that are in essential are true bifurcations are those that involves both the main vessel and the side branch. Bifurcation procedures are by their nature more complex than a straightforward lesions and the complexity comes because 
they are variation of anatomy, including different angulation, different sizes, the different uh, amount of material around in terms of calcium, uh, different uh, size of the vessels that can sometimes interfere with deciding what kind of a stent you need to use. We have to learn by the Nordic study, which is the safest way for the patient. And the safest way is to use, to use only one stent for, for the patient, one stent for the main vessel and not to touch the side branch. But in some cases we can't use only one stent because Something is going on with the side branch while we are doing our intervention. And so we have to decide what to do or, or how to treat the side branch. What's different about treating bifurcation in comparison to treating any other lesion is that you're not treating one branch. You're treating two vessels at the same time. Well, this makes it challenging because you don't know what's going to happen. If you, treat, if, you, if you put a balloon in one and just dilate one, you don't know what's going to happen to the other branch. So when you're treating bifurcations, you have to treat two vessels. So you're treating two lesions separately but at the same time. And that makes it challenging because you know, the plaque or, or the stenosis, the plaque that's in the stenosis can move from one branch to another. So the limitation of provisional stenting is if you have to use or to change from provisional stenting to T-stenting, we have most, we have a gap at the edge, edge of the lesion. If you have to change from one stent to two or so three stent stents, bifurcation and provisional stenting is not the best way. With the provisional approach, we've seen that in about 30-35% of cases, there is a failure in the side branch. So by failure, I mean there's a significant residual stenosis in the side branch, or the side branch might close due to dissection or have reduced flow, or you might have to stent the side branch after stenting the main branch, which is Definitely a more complex procedure. Now our problem is black shifting or calcium shifting in the ostium of the side branch. And then we have a big problem. We have to rewire the side branch. We have to save the side branch. And it's technically not very easy to save the side branch. Now it's, it's a problem for the health system if the patients have to come back. We knew from the syntax study, if the patient comes back or once, once or two or three, three times, it's very expensive, more than 3,000 euros. So I've gotten a couple of is relatively unique stent amongst the stents we currently have in our practice. First of all, it's made of nitrogen, and secondly, it's a self-expanding stent. And thirdly, it is different from other stents by the fact that it has a cap that can open up when you deploy and when you deploy it would sit at the ostium of the side branch protecting the side branch and also making main vessel stenting easier and avoids the issue of having an angle a triangle of uh, position between the main vessel and side branch which is not covered by the stent. Uh, what I like about the capella side guard um, is that in the beginning of the procedure already, I can optimize the result on the side branch. So I, I treat the side branch already with a side guard and then concentrate on the main branch. I think uh, you have to accept the idea that uh, there are some other solutions besides uh, being provisional all the time. Uh, if the side branch uh, is a relatively large size and uh, more importantly have some uh, a critical disease, uh, protecting the side branch, uh, getting a good result on the side branch uh, is uh, as important uh, as having a good result on the main branch. Uh, like any new approach, uh, needs some uh, dedication to learn, uh, but uh, when you have uh, mastered the technique, uh, you will uh, get benefit uh, not only on your side, but also on the patient side.